In this video, I'm going to show you how to create some insane VFX shots and also how to blend them into your own footage. With this method, you will be able to create some viral social media posts or to enhance your storytelling. I'll also be sharing some of my favorite tips and tricks. Okay, let's get into it. Now you've probably seen these weird and wacky effects before, but I'm hopefully going to show you some different ways of using them. So let's have a quick look at all the effects that they provide. So we have crush it, squish it, melt it, explode it, inflate it, cakeify it, dissolve it, crumble it, ta-da it, and deflate it. And they've also added some Halloween themed effects like levitate it, decapitate it, and eye pop it. I'll break this video up into chapters focusing on each of the effects and then I'll show you how to use this footage and edit it even further to create some really unique videos. Now, there are paid plans with Pika, but they also have a free plan, which gives you 150 monthly video credits, and each video costs around 15 credits, so that's around 10 free videos a month. So it's definitely worth trying out. These effects are incredibly easy to do. All you have to do is click and choose your image or drag it in like that. And then if you click on Pika effect, it will have all of the effects listed here. So I'm going to start with crush it. And as you can see, it's added it into the prompt. And all you have to do is click this button. The crush it effect is exactly how it sounds. It will crush whatever object is in the image. So here is the video of the car getting crushed. And while sometimes they might not come out perfect, as you can see, it's dragging the tree on the right hand side down. You can just redo them by doing the retry button. I actually took one of these videos a step further and stitched it onto the end of a video. So as you can see in this clip, I am walking into the car and then the effect takes place. So it seems like it's happening all in the same video. I'll show you how to stitch these together later on. And you can also do some weird ones with Crush It. So here I actually crushed myself. And it has quite a gross squish at the end where it kind of squishes all of my body parts out. And here's a tip. You can even add extra details into the prompt. So for this one, I put crush it into flames and fire. And it worked out really well. And here I said crush into red paint and meat. And it's really gross. I've generated loads of videos with this effect. So here are a couple more examples of the crush it videos I've created. So you can choose to make one of those kind of viral videos where they crush objects. And I created this image in mid journey and it looks exactly like those viral videos. If you want to get rid of the Pika watermark, you can do it from their download options. So you just click on these three buttons and then choose the no watermark option. Now let's have a look at the explode effect. And that's exactly what it does. It explodes whatever is in the image. So I'm going to use my car image again, and this is what it created with just the explode it prompt. And it looks pretty good. It's quite chunky, but there's like a bunch of metal that just appears from under the car, which is a bit weird. But then I found if you add to the prompt, like in this one, which is pretty crazy, I put explode it into leaves and plants, and it looks like a bunch of leaves and kind of lettuce comes flying at the camera, which is pretty unique to be honest. And in this one, I said explode it into colorful paint and it looks like a giant paint bucket has exploded in the car. And this one is pretty nuts. I said explode it into balloons and there is this huge explosion of balloons. And here we have explode it into colorful confetti. Explode it into fireworks. And it's actually added in loads of fireworks around the car, which looks pretty sweet. Explode it into green smoke which really rips the car apart. Pretty dynamic. I even did explode into birds and birds just start flying out of the explosion. And here's a video of me kicking a ball as I explode. In this one, I put explode into colorful paint and it did a pretty good job. And here's one of me exploding as I run and jump. This is a really dynamic effect to use in your videos and make sure to experiment with different prompts to try and get some really creative outputs. Now let's have a look at inflate it. So if you want to make stuff float, this is the effect that you want. 
and what it does, it just kind of blows up the object with air and it floats away. It has that really satisfying balloon effect on it. And in this one, I made my car float while I was still in the shot. Now this is using the masking effect, which I will get to shortly. And I got this stock footage video of this girl running and jumping, and I wanted to make her float when she jumped in the air. And it worked really well. And when it's stitched with the original footage, it's a really cool effect. And in this one, I'm just throwing my ball up in the air, and then it just decides to float away. If you're enjoying this video, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to our channel. Okay, back to the video. Now let's have a look at Deflate It. So the opposite of the inflate one, now we're going to deflate stuff. So I did some tests of people lifting heavy weights and I thought it would be funny to see them deflate. Like in this video here, the weights are just too heavy for him. And it's done a really good job at identifying the object. As in this one, you can see there's loads of things in the background, but it only deflates the thing that I wanted it to, which was the man and the weight. And again in this one, the weights are just too heavy for him. In this video, I deflated a pumpkin, and then I stitched it together with a video of me poking the pumpkin with a knife. And the final result looks like I'm deflating the pumpkin, which I think turned out to be a pretty satisfying video. And in this one, I end up ripping off a plaster, which I then end up deflating myself. Now let's have a look at Crumble It. Crumble It is pretty satisfying, which as you can see, crumbles the object in the image. It breaks it down in a really satisfying way. So I did the same thing with the weightlifters, and it looks great. It works really well with buildings, so if you were trying to create a disaster short film or something where there's an earthquake, then this is going to be the effect that you want to use. And again, using that stock footage of the girl jumping, it does a really good job at making all the bits crumble down onto the floor. And in this one, I end up hitting the pumpkin, which makes it crumble apart. And I got this clip of myself, and I end up clicking on the wrong app. So you can have a lot of fun with the crumble effect. I've also created another AI VFX video, but instead of Pika, I use Runway's AI video generator to create some insane looking VFX. If you're interested in watching that, then I'll leave a link to it down below. Now let's have a look at Squish It. Squish It is pretty unique, as it has these huge creepy hands come in and grab whatever's on the screen, and squish it like it's a piece of Play-Doh. And it looks really realistic. As you can see from the videos on screen, it's a really visceral effect. Like this hand one is really creepy. As she presses into the image of my hand, it has that realistic kind of... I don't know, it's kind of a weird texture. It's probably an effect that I wouldn't use often, but it's definitely unique. And you can also stitch it into a video, like this video I've got of a hippo, and then she just comes and grabs it. Now let's have a look at Melt It. So Melt It just creates a liquid simulation from whatever object is on the screen. As you can see, my camera has melted on the table. It doesn't look too realistic, but it does a good job at falling on the surface that it's on. And in this one, I actually shot some green screen footage to put my hands in front of the footage so it looks like I'm making the mug melt. And here I made a candle melt. It's even got some really impressive reflections on the wooden table. And in this one, I wanted this metal man to melt, and then I stitched it into the footage of the man. And it's a really cool effect. Now let's have a look at Cakeify It. Now this is a really weird one, as a hand appears with a knife and cuts the object in the image. Now, to be honest, this is the effect that I've had the least success with, as sometimes they just don't cut the object right. As you can see in some of these videos, it just looks really weird and it just doesn't work as well as I thought it would. Now, here's a tip for this effect. If you add a knife into the image, it will use that knife to cut the object which is pretty cool, so you can choose the knife and hand that cuts the object. If anybody has some tips on how to get this effect to look good, please leave a comment down below. Now let's have a look at Dissolve It. Do you remember when Thanos snapped away half the universe with the snap of his fingers? Well, now you can do the same thing. As you can see, it does an incredible particle simulation to dissolve the object in the image. 
As you can see, I've done it again with the girl jumping, and it works really well. So in this video here, I'm just chilling with my cat, and then with the click of my finger, we dissolve away. And it does a really good job at filling in that background. It's a really fun effect to play around with. Now let's have a look at Tada It. This one is pretty strange. It acts as a kind of disappearance magic trick. As you can see, a giant pair of hands and a big white cloth appears over the image and then makes the object in the image disappear. It doesn't always work, but when it does, it does a pretty good job. And if you get good at editing, then you can create a looped video like the one you can see on screen. Now let's have a look at Levitate It. So this is one of the Halloween themed effects, but it works pretty well. As you can see here, I've made my car levitate. It's similar to the inflate effect, but it doesn't blow up the object and it just makes it float off the ground. What I'm really impressed with is the reflections on the car window, as you can see, kind of change as the car starts floating. And here I have the weightlifters levitating. And here's a few more examples. So this little kid just starts floating in the air. As you can notice, it adds in the bottom half of the body, which is pretty impressive. And this one of me and my cat, we just start floating off the chair. Now let's have a look at Decapitate It. And another Halloween themed effect. This one is pretty interesting. It doesn't work all the time. As you can see here, if the hands are in the shot, it will use them. But as I'm holding my phone, it just looks a bit weird. And I did the animated kid again, and it did a pretty good job at getting his head off. It would have been better if the head stayed in the shot, but it's quite impressive how it knows where the head is and it adds the hands in. And I did a test and it actually takes off multiple heads. So it takes mine and my cat's head off. But as you can see, my cat's head just kind of disappears. So it doesn't always work perfectly. Now let's have a look at Eye Pop It. So another Halloween themed effect. This one just adds some goofy eyeballs popping out of the character. So as you can see here, some eyeballs pop out and it looks okay. I don't think it's the best effects they've got. You have to make sure that the face is quite close. As I tried it with this weightlifter, you can see it's kind of trying to do it, but it does definitely struggle. The eye poppets on the animated kid works a bit better. And I tried it with this man in the club and it works pretty well actually. You can see they're kind of 3D kind of eyeballs that pop out. So go ahead and try this eye popping effect. And now I'll show you some techniques on how to edit together these effects with the original footage. I'll be using CapCut's free online video editor just so that it's accessible for anyone to do these effects. You can also use editing software like Premiere Pro if you want to get more advanced with the editing. So to start with, I'm going to show you the masking technique. I'll be using the pumpkin video as an example. So I've got the clip here of me with the knife. As you can see, I poke the pumpkin and then I want to add in the video of the pumpkin deflating. So I've got that clip here and what you can do is drag it above that clip. And as you can see, when it starts, the knife disappears, but we want the knife to be in the shot. So what you can do then is come over to the basic tool and click on mask. Now it will give you a bunch of shapes. So for this one, I'll go with rectangle. So what I want to do in this one is move the mask. So I've got the knife in the shot still. So you can move the masks around and you can choose to feather the edge. If you feather the edge, it will just create a nice soft kind of blur in between the masked area. I've rotated the mask so that the knife is still in the shot. And if you move it, you can see the knife disappears. So I think that doesn't look too bad if there's a bit of a feather on the end of the knife. Then if I go to play the clip, as you can see, it adds them both together. So that's just a really good way on how to combine your original footage with an effects shot. Now let's have a look at stitching the effects shot at the end of a video. So this is very simple. I've got two clips here. The first clip is the original footage. So this is just a stock footage clip that I've got, but you can use any video that you want. Now I find it's best to use clips that are kind of generally still, like the camera's not moving around too much as when you go to generate the effects shot, 
Pika normally has the camera still when it does the effect shot. So it'll be weird if the camera was moving loads and then it hits the effect shot and the camera's still. So try to play to the strengths of Pika and keep a still shot. You can always add fake movement later in the shot if you want to. So all I've done is placed the effect clip at the end of the shot. And if you play it back, it clips them together. This is the most simple method of stitching the effect shot into the real footage. Now let's have a look at adding green screen footage to the effects shots. So I've got this clip of the melting cup and I want to add my hands over the clip. So it seems like I'm using magic to make the mug melt. So I just filmed my hands in front of a green screen. You can pick up cheap green screens on Amazon if you need to. And then in CapCut, all you have to do is go to Smart Tools, Remove Background. You can either do Auto Removal or Chroma Key. So Chroma Key, you just pick the color of the background and it will get rid of that. And you can choose the intensity. And there you go. It's added it into the shot. This is just a very simple example, but hopefully you can get some cool ideas on how to implement green screen footage with these effects. All right, so we've reached the end of this video, and I hope you can see how useful these effects can be to create some really eye-catching VFX videos. At first glance, they may just seem like a gimmick, but if you can implement them into your footage, I believe you can get some really unique results. If you have any tips or tricks on how to use these effects, please leave them in the comments down below. And it would be awesome if you could like and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. If you'd like to check out one of our other videos, feel free to click the image you can see on screen. Thanks for watching.